Jesus, ich lebe. Danke, dass wir morgen in die Teamwürdigkeit kommen, komm, Jere. Danke, dass wir uns in jede Umlage kann am Bett. Danke, dass wir uns in jede Umlage kann kommen, kann nicht viel kann Danke sagen für die wunderliche Tag, für die wunderliche Umlage, für die Liebe, für die Nabeiheit, dass ich zusammen mit uns ist, Jere. Was ein guter Tag. Die Tag, wo die Jere gemacht hat. Das ist Jere dafür in Jesus' Namen. Amen. Und Amen. Goedemorgen, Dio Familie, bye bye, welkom hier so bij ons. Ek wil jou vraag, wil jy nie net draai, daar is so vijf mense toe nie, en dan net een lekker high five gee, en net vir hulle sê, hier is een goeie dag nie. Ons is so blij dat jy saam met ons is. Jy is baie welkom net vir oom dat jou sit plak te neem. Uh, as een familie is er rechtig my voorrag om vir ochend. Ek gaan bykie later bykie meer sê, maar om uh, ook so vir Gabriel Strijdom hier saam met ons, Gabriel Strijdom, ek skies, saam met ons uh, hier so te hee vir ochend. En ek is in so groot afwachting vir dit wat die Heere ook net wil doen uh, in ons en wat hy ook net op jou hart wil kom doen en uh, hoe jy ons sommer net op een nieuwe manier kan ontmoet ook vir oogend. So, as jy ons besoek vandag, het is ook altyd lekker om besoekers te heen. Ons wil herkenning gee, om te sê dit voel partij keer bykie vreemd ook um, in, a, in iemand anders ter sy gebouw. En daarom wil ons sommer net aan jou herkenning gee en vir jou sê, jy moet rechtig op jy gemak wees. Aan bidie jyre is soos wat jy voel en uh, geniet net die tyd saam. Want um, ons is allemaal deel van sy familie en uh, ek wil hier met dit saam tot so geniet. Ek het wel een ding wat ek jou wil vraag, wat jou so klein bykie op die spot gaan sit, maar ek beloof jou, ons gaan jou nie vraag om jy voor te kom bid, of so nie. Ons wil net graag by jou so connectiekaartjie kry, een besoekerskaartjie kry, en, en graag vir jou geskenkie gee, as jy ons besoek volg. En, so ek wil jou vraag om net vannig jou hand op te steek, net al waar jy is, as jy ons besoek, en um, dan wil jy welkom span net vannig by jou draai maak, en sommer net vir jou herkenning gee, en ons as een gemeente, wil ook net vir jou herkenning gee. Deel familie, kom ons laat hulle ook net lekker thuis voel volgend saam met ons. Daar sê hy. En jy kan jou hand net so ophou, en jy kan vir ons daai blaadjie voel toe, en na afloop van, van hierdie tyd saam, hierdie dienst saam, um, wil ek jou uitnooi, ons het so'n besoekerstoonmank daar binnen, en um, ek wil jou uitnooi sien om sommer net een koffiekie daar so saam met ons te drink, en die rest van die gemeente onthou, ons drink lekker koffie na die tyd ook saam, en ek wil jou rechtig uitnooi om so saam met ons koffie te drink. Dan wil ek net vir jy sê, ons is so opgewonde, hierdie kwartaal is weer aan die gang, so hierdie is die eerste week en, um, uh, van die nieuwe kwartaal, en ons sien rechtig uit nog klomp goed wat gaan gebeur hier by die deo familie. Ons kinderkerk het ook um, uh, vir ochend begin, en dan ook vrijdag aand het shift begin, het ons tienerbediening ook begin, so al die oukies wat in die hoerschool is, ek wil jou rechtig uitnooi, bring een pijl saam, hulle is nou bezig met die reeks, wat jy definitief van gaan hou, hulle praat bykie oor dating, en um, dis dalk net goed uh, om te kom, vir hierdie reeks, ok, miskien is dit die ouwerse tip om te sê, dis nou die tyd om hulle te stuur, ok, so, um, dit is ons tieners op een vrijdag aan van 6 uur af, en dan wil ek ook noem met die kinderkerk, hulle doen ook hierdie kwartaal, doen hulle reeks, Rescue 911, en teendeel, hulle like smart, al die leiders daar achter, hulle en lyk soos brandweermanne, en daar soos verpleegsters vir ochend, en allemaal hulle lyk so opgedres, ek sê, die ouwers moet rechtig veilig voel, hulle is een goeie hande vir ochend, oe, dit is een klomp brandweermanne daarvoor, so, um, ja, so, vir hierdie kwartaal, miskien ook net met die kinderkerk, moet ek noem, die 21ste augustus, gaan hulle op daardie dag, gaan hulle actually een uitreik doen, na die brandweer toe. So, asblief, maak ek seker, dat jy sommer net die details volg, by die jou kids, contact Maria sa, sy gaan in die week, en so gaan sy meer detail begin uitstuur daar oor, maar hulle gaan uitreik doen, na die brandweer toe, daai sondag oog, en tydens ons dienst, die 21ste augustus. Dan praat daarvan, Die, ene, die 20ste augustus is ook um, ons vrouwe funksie wat ons het, en uh, die thema vir hierdie jaar is stap saam, kom stap saam, en uh, ons sien rechtig uit daarna, jylle kan details by Venetoek kry rondom dit, en, um, 
en dan ook, wat ek dalkend wil sê, van daar die dag ook, Marinda de Jager, gaan ons spreker wees, so, vrouwens, jy moet het nie missie, ons het gister een manne ontbijt gehad, en ek denk, het was een fantastische tijd geweest. en uh, kan ek net sien, hoeveel van die manne was gister, jy so, as jy, daarom een paar manne, ja, jy so, as een paar manne, en jy het julle het geniet, oké, okay, jy moet daarom nou ook oom Angus hier uithal, amen, nee, daar is hy, nee, Het was so lekker ook gister, um, om sommer net saam so die manne ontbuit te kan heen, en dan die vrouw is, dan die 20ste augustus, so neem asjeblief uh, kennis daarvan. Dan ook hierdie week begin ons met een kursus, wat ons noem, uh, How to Forgive. En is rechtig om jou te kan help, om dier sekere goeders in jou leven te werk. Ons allemaal met een of ander tijd vergewe, en dalk is jou op een plek waar jy dit nie nou moet doen nie, maar, maar jy gaan iwers daar uitkom of dalk is jy by een plek waar jy rechtig worstel met iets, en uh, dit gaan op dinsda aan de wees, vir 8 weke, die koste daarvoor is 100 rand, en um, ek wil jou uitnooi, hierdie, hierdie dinsdag, gaan ons begin daarmee, en ek wil jou rechtig uitnooi, om dinsdag aan te kom, jy kan nou al reeds jou naam gaan opskryf daarvoor, anders sinds wees die dinsdag aan, um, en, uh, en dan kan ons ook kyk, wat er groep ons ook voer en toe vat, vir die volgende 8 weke, Ek dink dit gaan ook een fantastische, fantastische uh, kursus wees. En het gaan jou rechtig leer om een bybelse fondatie te bou. Ek wil nog so een of twee goed sê. In teendeel wil ek vir jy noem, ons het so, um, so boekmerk, ons het dit de laatste week ook uitgedeel. As jy dit nie ontvang het nie, maak ons blijf het draai by die, by die toonbank. Um, en hulle sal dan vir jou of jy nekie gee, of hulle sal net een nota maak vir die kantoor, om sommer net vir hulle ook te sê dat jy uh, so enig keer kan kry, dis met al die datums vir die kwartaal. Ons hart vir die kwartaal is rechtig om te sê, vind sy hart. Dit gaan oor om God sy hart te vind. Dit gaan oor rechtig om net te vind, dit wat hy wil hee, en dit wat sy hart vir ons as een familie is. So ja, dis net so een paar van die, van die afgekondigings wat ek net vanmorgen vir u wil, wil bring en vir u wil noem. Ons gaan nou in die tijd gaan van aanbidding, maar voordat ons in die tijd van aanbidding gaan, wil ek jou sommer vraag om jou tieners en jou offerandes gereed te kry. En volgend wil ek jou weer hinder, wanneer jy gee, is dit vir ons belangrik hier, so dat jy gee met die blijmoedige hart, dat jy gee uit die hart wat God sy hart ken, want God is een God wat gee, God is een God wat, wat oorvloedig vir my en jou ook net so kom gee, en, en daarom wanneer jy gee vir ochend, dat jy ook so een dankbaarheid teen oor hom, om gee, want het gaan alles oor die saak van dankbaarheid, ek lees so in Psalm 50, lees ek hier die mooie woorde van die Heere, en God sê, al die dieren van die bos is myne, en ook al die wilde dieren op die duisend berge, ek ken elke voel op die berge, en alles wat roer in die veld, is myne, sê die Heere, sou ek honger wees, sal ek dit nie vir jou sê nie, want aan my behoor die aarde en alles daarop. Eet ek dalkie vleis van bille of drink ek die bloed van bokke? Nee, die Heere sê, offer dankoffers aan God en betaal jou geloftes aan hom, die allerhoogste. En het was so, vir my so mooi om die verse te kom lees. Volgend kom gee jy nie omdat God jou geld nodig het nie. Volgend kom gee jy nie jou ombring omdat God jou ombring nodig het nie. En volgend kom gee jy dit uit die dankbare hart, omdat jy liefde vir hom het, en omdat jy rechtig ook net so gefokus wil wees op hom. Want hy het jou meer lief as wat jy ooit, ooit, ooit kan denk. En dus kom ons morgen ook so saam kom. So, ek wil jy vraag om saam met my te staan, kom ons staan som net so saam, en jy sal sien, jy sal smaankies hier voor, ek gaan som net vir ons gebed doen, en jy sal smaankies voor, en ek wil jou uitnooi om jou overhande te breng, jou tienis te breng, hier na een van jullie maandjes toe, en het ook om ingooi, terwijl Mikaela hulle ons laai in die eerste saang, en, um, en uh, om sommer net jou offer te breng, ook so vir die Heere. Vader, ons loof jy, en ons eer jy vanmorgen, en ons is so dankbaar vir jy liefde, ons is so dankbaar vir jy omgee, ons is so dankbaar dat jy hier in ons midde is, ons is so dankbaar, Heere, vir ook in verlewe en dit in oorvloed. Vader, vanmorgen sien jy ons harte, En vanmorgen, vader, dank ek jy ook so, dat jy kom voorsien, en dank jy dat ons ook vir ochend, selfs in jy werk kan kom saai. En dank jy ook, jyre, dat jy vanmorgen voorsien, selfs so die, wat nie het nie. Ek 
eerie daarvoor, mag ons focus ewe wees in die more, in Jesus naam, en ons allemaal sê, Amen, en Amen, is welkom om het te bring, Mikaela, ons sien uit ons om met jou te aanbed.
oor die Vader. Hy is die Vader van elke gemeenskap in die jimmel en op aarde. Mag hy dier sy gees uit die rijkdom van sy goddelike grootheid aan jylle die kracht gee om innerlijk sterk te word. Dan sal Christus die, die, die geloof in jylle harte omboon en sal jylle in Godse liefde gewortel en gegrond wees wees. Mag jylle in staat wees om saam met, saam met al Godse mense te begryp hoe breed en hoe lang en hoe hoog en diep sy liefde is. Dan sal jylle Christus sy liefde wat elke verstand te boe begaan beleef. Mag jylle heel te mal met die volheid van God, God vervul word. Hy moet geprys word. Hy wat mag het om dier die kracht wat in ons werk oneindig meer te doen as wat ons vraag of dink.
verse wat Mikaela vir oogend gelees het in Ephesians 3 was werkelijk ons gebed was werkelijk ons gebed is my gebed al een geruime tyd vir ons as een gemeente vir die kwartaal om rechtig sy hart te vind is dat jy rechtig kan begryp en ontdek hoe lief hy jou het ek denk ons het droogte by ons Ons het droogte vir ons om rechtig te besef hoe die God van jimmel en aarde oor jou voel. Hoe hy oor jou dink van vir ochend toe jy wakker geword het. Hoe hy oor jou dink toe jy aan die slaap geraak het. Hoe hy oor jou dink toe jy net selfs net saam met jou gesin was. Hoe hy oor jou dink, hoe hy oor jou voel, hoe, hoe God vir ochend oor jou voel. En ek kan nie vir jou dalk in woord omskryf nie maar gebruik ek al die woorde wat ek het, al my woorde skat, kan ek, sal het altyd kort kom, vir jou te kan sê, hoe lief hy jou het, hoe lief hy jou het. Die beste wat ons weet, is dat, is een preen van Jesus, wat sy hele leven afgeleer, wat alles afgeleer, so dat jy, kan sien hoe lief hy jou het, dat hy bereid is om die prijs in jou plek te betaal, is bereid om die prijs, in jou plek te betaal. Heere, ek bid, dat die ons een nieuwe revelation sal gee in die ochend, Heere. Gee ons een nieuwe openbaring van die liefde. Gee ons een nieuwe openbaring, Vader, van die liefde. Selfs, Vader, net terwijl ons ons muziekinstrumente speel, terwijl ons ons gemeente staan, staan ons in die teenwoordigheid. Heilige Geest, jy is hier, jy is hier tussen ons, jy kom werk met elkeen van ons. Gee ons een nieuwe openbaring van die liefde. Holy Spirit, we trust you trust you, ons het, ons het trouwe volgen, en ek bid vir een nieuwe openbaring van die gees een nieuwe openbaring van die liefde, een nieuwe openbaring van die liefde, keer jy Jesus, keer jy keer jy volgen Jesus kom ons aan al die woorde net nog so twee keer, so net so as stemme, ons van die muziek so net so stil vir die oomlik ons raak so net so stil met die muziek en so mente En ek wil jou vraag, maar net vanmorgen, net sy, sy hart te kom raak vanmorgen, en hierdie woorde te verklaar as een gebed vir hom. Een vraag vanmorgen, hoe groot is die liefde? Oh, 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 hoe groot is die liefde? groter liefde in die wereld gekeen nie. Dankie dat ons 
daar die liefde kan ken en kan leer ken. Jezus ons die lief, omdat hij ons eerste lief gehad het. Word verheerlik, hy tussen ons. Amen. Amen. Jy is welkom om sommer net hierdie stemming jou sitplek te kan neem. Mag jy volgend werkelijk sy liefde beleef. Het is in die Lesotho berge, die ouderdom van 18, het ek een hand gesit, en gesien hoe die wolke boer, die basis gaan vir ons daar by mekaar gekom het, ek het voorheen van YWAM gehoor, en ek het voorheen een paar keer by die YWAM basis in Wooster gedraai, YWAM is Youth with a Mission, en uh, ons het die uitreik gedoen al die suite toe, en ek het daar by die berg gesit, en, en ek het sommer net weer een liefde gekry vir God, terwijl jy met die vol maan sien, oor die wolke so, oor die volleie haar kloop, en sien die grootheid van God raak, terugkom in die huis, het hy oud aan in ons gemeente, het klompie boekies vir ons gegeen, en een van die boekies wat sy vir my gegeet, was van Lauren Cunningham, en toe ek die eerste hoofstukke lees, toe kom ek achter, is die stichter van YWAM, en trend 60 jaar terug, denk ek, Lauren Cunningham, YWAM gestig het, met die hart vir die nasies, die boekies in naam is Daring to Live on the Edge, en ek lees die boekie, en die fantastische ding van Lauren Cunningham, is um, reg oor die wereld, het hulle YWAM basis geskep, en uh, dit is eindelijk maar een sending universiteit. Dit universiteit wat jou oplei, om sending te kan doen, reg oor die wereld, ek weet nie eers hoeveel campus het daar nou al is nie, maar Lauren Cunningham leef steeds, hy is in sy tachtigs, en hy is steeds betrokken in Kauna, is hy nog steeds bezig om te mentor, na 60 jaar, sy bezig om reg oor die nasies te kan mentor. En volgend, is het ook so groot voorrag, om um, die Fire and Fragrance leier saam met ons te kan hee, Gabriel Strijdom, uh, van, die, van die YWAM groep af. En um, Gabriel het al reeds sommer net in die nawek so, ek wil amper sê nog dieper in my hart in geklim, en ons gesinse hart in geklim, en Dit is net rechtig so voorrag om hom vir oogend aan julle voor te kan stel. En ek kan sê dat dit wat hy dra is een is diep soeke na die hart van God. En dit wat hy dra is ook, a, ek wil sê, generaties wat gesoek het vir God, oor die 60 jaar. En is dit rechtig my voorrag om te sê, Gabriel, kom en bedien vir oogend, soos wat die Heere jou ook lei. Kom ons, gees hom net vir hom een lekker aan een klap en laat hom ook thuis voel hier by ons. Morgen jylle allemaal, is lekker om volgende die beelde te wees. Um, ek gaan bykie my taal meng, vergewe my asjeblief. Um, maar my naam is Gabriel, Gabriel, ek het die rarige preferens nie. Mense vraag my, wat sien kies jy? En ek joke gewoon en sê, wat ook al taal jy by die huis praat. Plaam my nie, wat vir jou gemakkelijk is. Um, maar so voorig my volgende die beelde te wees, Newcastle, hierdie naweks eerste keer wat hier is. En ek het rarige verwachting dat die heren iets gaan doen, in ons allemaal sy harte, in my hart en dat hy, hy het een afspraak met ons. En so, ek wil gauw vir ons bid, en um, daar da gaan ons inspring vir ochend, maar ek wil julle vraag, ons pandeer vir ochend, um, probeer jou best om nie net dier emotions te gaan nie. Okay, probeer jou best om, om, om te sê, Jeris, wat, wat jy vir my vir ochend? Ek wil jou ontmoet. Ek wil jou ontmoet op een nieuwe manier, op een krachtige manier, en ek glo rarig die Heere het iets vir ons in ons tyd saam volgend. So Jesus, dankie vir vir ochend, dankie vir Gerry en Span en hierdie amazing gemeente. En hylle gees ons, ons kies net om ons aandag te draai na u toe en ons sê net, jy is waardig van ons aandag. Ons vrouw net sal u teenwoordig wees in een nieuwe manier met ons. 
ontmoet ons volgend. Heer, ek vraag dat elkeen van ons hier sal uitgaan met iets van een ons hart, op een nieuwe manier. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Amen. Ok, so ek wil gauw vinnig in het voorstel, ek is Gabriel, en hier so is een foto van my vrou en my klein dochterkie, dit was twee weke terug, daar is Michelle en klein Anastasia, hulle is by die huis, Anastasia is bykie siek hierna week, anders sal hulle saam met ons hier gewees het, maar um, ek sê altyd vir mense, niemand my gesê hoe amazing dit is om my pa te word nie, soos ek voel, allemaal my nie altyd gesê soos die koste, allemaal gesê, jy gaan minder slaap, jy gaan soos minder hierdie doen, jy gaan minder daar doen, niemand vir my gesê hoe awesome dit is nie, so ek, belo- ek was soos een week in het eind, toe gaan ek sê, hoekom het mense nie vir my gesê hoe lekker is dit nie, en ek word wakker in die nacht, en ek slaap ook minder, maar ek, sê, ek joke altyd mense, ek sê, ek vir hulle, kan nog, ek kan nie so vergelijk, maar hoor het my hart, ok, ek probeer een punt maak, het is soos as jy gered word, ok, as jy die heren ontmoet, is jou geselskap in die hele tijd wat jy opgegeet, nie. ok, jy word so veel gegeet, jy word soos onmoendlik baie gegeet, as jy weder, as jy weder geboren word, Maar dan gee jy meer weg, as jy jy ooit gedink het, jy gaan weggee. Ok, maar, en dis die selwe met die kind kry, toe ek al kry my hand en ek al vast, en ek so, oom my jammel, ek is nie moeilik uit. So, dit is my eerste gedachte geweest, dit is my familie, ek wens dat as die volgende keer as terugkom, kom hulle definitief saam, en um, ek het die voorrecht om my amazing te, community te help, leie in Potsjoestroom, um, ons so groep van net so oor die honderd sendelinge van recht oor die wereld, ons praat meer as derig tale, en ons hart is werkelijk, die Heer het ons het Afrika toe gesteer, en die sê vir ons sê, I'm not done with South Africa. And, I'm going to switch between Afrikaans and English, but, you need to hear this, I, I lived in America, I told this at the men's breakfast, had somebody that sponsored me American citizenship, and God told me, say, you have to say no, and you need to move back to South Africa. I'm not done with South Africa. And 27 people came with me, we were sent from Wyoming, Kona, we are the biggest pioneering group they've sent out in their history. So think about this, the biggest missions organization on earth, biggest team, was not sent to the Middle East, was not sent to India, was not sent to China, was not sent to Russia, was sent to South Africa. There has to be something in your heart that goes like, why? You understand, when none of us get paid, right? Nobody can tell us what to do. So 27 people had to hear from God together. And go like, God's told me to give up everything to move to South Africa. And my heart fully is, and I'm here with you this morning to tell you, that God is not done with South Africa. I have seen way more South Africans being done with South Africa than I've ever felt God being done with it. And I believe this morning that a part of what I am hoping for in this weekend together is that your faith will be stirred, that God can still do something miraculous in this nation. You need to understand by 2033, the largest population of Christians on earth will live in Africa. Africa will become the capital of Christianity. The average age in Africa is 19.3. We're the youngest continent on earth. 1.3 billion people. The average age in South Africa, let me rather say it this way, 22.4% of South Africans are under the age of 19. It's more than 20 million South Africans are teenagers. And I believe that's why God sent us, because our continent is shifting. Our country is shifting. It's becoming younger. And God is raising up movements because he has hope. But I want to tell you here that sitting in these seats, I love this. It's like a woman that came to me. And he says, Gabe, God gave me this word. Don't hold back because you're young. And I almost hugged him. It's a donkey worm. Glove it. A honey. But you know what? We need the gray-haired people. We need the wise people to tell us, hey, run, be wild, go run after God. I want to encourage you here, before I even start, this is not my sermon, I'm just warming up, all right? Before I even start this morning, if you're here, it means God wants you here. You're not here to go to work and go to heaven. You're here to make a difference. You're here to be a change agent. Doesn't matter how weak you feel. Doesn't matter how strong you feel. In the midst of my weakness, God will show forth his strength. 
We read in Corinthians, he says, but we have these treasures in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Ons is gekraakte kleipotte. En my kraak wees Godse glorie. Okay, jou kraak wees sy glorie. Daai plek waar jy swak voel, jy sikkel wat, sys, dit wees Godse goedheid, dit wees sy grootheid. En ek wil die linde uitnooi vir oogend, of vir dit sê, die heren moe in Zuid-Afrika. Hy is nie klaar met ons. Ek dink ons het, ons het in ons community, ons doen nie kruisijds raarigie, ek dink ons het in, ons het die 29 december 2019 die nou toe getrek, ons het amper drie jaar, ons nog nie drie jaar, 17.000 salvations gesien. Don't tell me God is done with South Africa. We literally have students walking up to us in the gym, going like, I need to get saved, what do I do? When's the last time somebody walked up to you and told you they need to get saved? That doesn't happen to me either. Do you know why? Because God is awakening hearts of people in South Africa. And he's just looking for willing vessels that will not just be so busy with their lives, but willing to turn towards what he has. So I just want to encourage you this morning, God's not done. If you're a teacher, you have no idea how important your work is. Who's teachers here? Can I see any educators? Can you stand up? All the teachers. Everybody is a teacher. Can you quickly stand up? I'm going to pray for you before we begin. You need to understand, okay, listen to this. The fatherlessness in South Africa, seven out of ten homes, kids grow up without a father. Seven out of ten. Kijk, wil net gehoord wees, 7 uit 10. Die nummer 1 rede vir poverty en vir crime in die wereld is fatherlessness. Ok? Now, why do I have teachers stand up? Because your government instituted answer to that problem. I don't think the government meant it, but it can totally work. Think about this, they're in your class the whole day. The whole day, 12 years long, they're sitting with a person in front of them. They will spend more time with you than with their parents. And I believe that if we can raise up an army of godly teachers, we might not be able to fix the problem of fatherless in this generation, but we can stop it from going to the next one. I want to encourage you as an educator. Your job is not just to get people knowledge. That's very important. Do it well, please. But... You can be that one that stands in the gap for where their brokenness is. Me and my dad are super close. We're like this. Very, very close. My dad loves the Lord. But he went and worked overseas for a year when I was 12 years old. And I had a math teacher. Jefrou van der Berg. That I legitimately think saved my life. Because she saw something and she stepped into a gap that was in my life. And she changed me forever. I want to encourage you as a teacher this morning. Your job is not without meaning. Our biggest crisis, you are the first responders. Ons grootste probleem is dat ons die paas nie. Jylle is die eerste antwoord, boom. Van hulle moet by jylle wees. En ek wil hulle aanraai, vertrou die geest om vir hulle te wees wat sy kinders. Is die children of peace, nie net people of peace, nie a child of peace. That if you pour into one, they will affect 30. Paul didn't look for everybody. He looked for people of peace. And they influenced the rest. Ask God for people, children of peace in your classrooms. And I believe God's going to move mightily. So if you have a teacher around you, can we just stretch out our hands to them? I just want to pray for them. I feel this is very important. So Lord, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters at standing. Lord, in the, in the importance of of this role that they have, God. This people, Lord, that is, that, that, that is that's raising up the next generation of South African leaders, God, of politicians, of business people. God, I ask that you will give them wisdom and grace to walk faithfully in what you've called them to be. That they're not just showing up every morning, but they have destiny in their hands. 
that they will plant trees of life that will bear fruit for generations to come. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So guys, it's such a privilege for me to be with you. And um, I feel this morning, I was kind of going to go one direction and then Harry kind of spoke to me and I saw what he had opened on his iPad and I had the same thought, I just wasn't sure. And I was like, okay, now I'm sure. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about just, I, I feel f- from the Lord, I'm going to talk about hearing God's voice, right? But I feel like I'm, I'm going to talk about it in a way a little bit maybe different, right? Because my, my desire, what I feel the Holy Spirit is pushing on my heart is that there is an invitation to this community to a deeper level of relationship with the Father. That there's a deeper place of relationship. And, 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 and the Lord is, is, is opening up a window of opportunity for you to step into. Um, and I believe that if you would position yourself rightly, God would do things that's beyond you when it comes to how you love Him and how you meet His love. So I'm going to read us here um, Psalm 50. I love this psalm. The last year, the psalm has been in my heart in a, in a profound way. It says, The mighty one, God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets, from Zion, perfect in beauty or the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. He comes and he will not be silent. And, and, and this is a profound piece of scripture. And, 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 and I think that I, I want you to know that any time in Hebrew literature, when there is a reputation, a repu, um, when they repeat something three times, it means they're trying to make a very important point. Okay, when it's three times repeated, it's like, hey, on dag, this Bible, I'm going to give you And the first three words of this psalm is the name of God. El Elohim Yahweh. The mighty one, God the Lord. Isn't that funny? It's like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But he's saying God who is the most God, who is the most high God. He's trying to make a point. It's like, trap of, it gaan op, 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 op. Okay, so I probeer for ons weis hier so, Dat die God, wat die grootste God is, bo alles, wat niemand kan denken hoeveel God hy is nie. Wat doen hy? Die eerste ding, wat het sê hierdie God doen, hy praat. The mighty one, God the Lord, wat sits on his throne, organizes the universe. No, he speaks. I feel this morning, this, that one portion right there is where I want to kind of hover for a little bit. Is that this God who's beyond everything, it says that the mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of the earth. When he comes, the mountains shake and tremble. In Revelations, we read that when he comes back, splits open the sky, people will pray that mountains will fall on them. Rather have the mountains fall on me than I see him face to face. It it is beyond our understanding to know how big this God is, to know how immense he is, to understand the weight of his glory, the perfection that he holds. And the first thing it says after it talks about the greatness of this God is that he speaks. He speaks. He speaks. I want you to hear this. He speaks. Now, why am I hammering this? I'm hammering this because to know God is life. What existed before God made anything? Somebody tell me. What existed? God, right? Thank you. But what does that mean, that God existed? Think through it. It's a a good question. 
Do you know before God made anything, what existed was relationship? Because within the Trinity, between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, there was perfect relationship. Relationship existed before anything else. You're made for relationship. And the foundation for relationship is communication. You cannot have communication, you cannot have relationship without communication. Doesn't matter how hard you try, speak to any one of the married couples, if there is a breakdown in communication, there is a breakdown in relationship. And I believe one of the biggest things that the enemy has stolen from the church is understanding how badly God desires to speak to you. And what we do is we relegate the ability to hear God's voice to a spiritual few, and we actually rob ourselves of the depth of relationship. Because we go like, I'm not like that prophetic person. We put a personality type on the people who hear God. You're a little bit like X, Y, Z. I'm not like that, so God doesn't speak to me like that. Lie! Lie from the pit of hell. If the enemy can get you to believe that, he can get you to break off the depth of relationship that God has made you to walk in. And this morning, I believe the invitation is, come and know me. Come and know me. Know what I am like. When I prayed this morning, I felt to share with you guys, I feel there's three hindrances, three things that hinder us from living a life from His voice. You need to understand faith comes by hearing, not by seeing. Some of the reasons some of you are struggling to fulfill what God has put before you is because you look at other people and you're not listening to His voice. Let, let me maybe add this. His voice is also not a slot machine. You don't put in a prayer, pull it, and you get what you want. He's a person. Okay? He's a, he doesn't work like that. You build relationship with a person, you get to know the person, and in the relationship, things happen. If I have a conversation with my wife just because I want something the whole time, it might take her a week or two to figure it out. But once she figured it out, I've just burned that bridge. Come on, Ali Frauenzi. As the Amen da Ivers. Ne? It's war. Okay? We all know that because we're not stupid. Now, if we're not stupid and we know that, what do you think the God that knows everything thinks? He knows your desires that you don't even know you have. And he's like, hey, just come to me. I want to encourage us. So, three things. Number one, the first thing that hinders us from approaching God and hearing His voice is a misunderstanding of grace. We think God gave us enough grace on the cross so we don't go to hell, but a lot of us live with hell inside of us. What do I mean with that? Let me ask the question. Okay, but I need responses. Okay, I court the whole alambuani, full atoms. Okay. Rarach, a korte hande. Wie hieso, as jy in die oog opstaan, om stil tijd te hou? Wie hieso, voor jy al stil te tijd het, voor jy angstig of gestres? Is daar enig iemand wat so voel, ooit? Kan nou gau sien. Ok, hou die hand op, hoog, niemand judge jy nie, ek doen dit in elk lewe kerk waar ek praat. Ok, so hierdie middelgroep is die heilige groep, of oneerlik, en dan die twee groepen daar praat. Ok, so ek wil gau kyk jy moet sien, he. en hierdie twee groepen hieso, is dat tenminste 70% van die mense handeld op is. Jy kan maar afse, dankie. Isn't that interesting? I believe that is one of the main reasons the enemy somehow convinced you that you need to be something before you can approach God. It, 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 let me say it this way. It actually works the other way around. It, 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 you don't go and go get fig leaves and cover yourself up and then go to Jesus. You know, there's other people that did that as well, right? 
What happened when Adam and Eve fell short, when they sinned? What's the first thing God did? You know he saw it. Everybody knows it, right? God knows everything. So he saw them sinning. But what does God do when he comes into the, into the garden? He what? Resuk hulle. Hy gaan soek hulle. Denk jy, hy het gewet wat hulle is? Kost hy gewet wat hulle is? Hy weet alles. Okay? Die idee was nie dat hy gesoek het nie. The idea is that he led with a question, not an accusation. God is never unlike himself. He's never like the accuser. He's always relational. Question asking is the foundation of good communication. It's I want to know. Because why? I want to see how much you would give. So when God entered into the garden, he knew Adam and Eve have sinned, and he leads with a question. Adam, where are you? Hey, buddy, we meet every night at this time. I can't find you. Where are you, Adam? God's heart, I think, was hoping in the best of his ability that Adam and Eve would run naked and shame to him. But what they did was they went and find and made their own righteousness somehow. And I believe one of the biggest hindrances to a life of intimacy with the Lord is we are aware of our shortcomings, but we do not apply the blood of Jesus to our lives. And instead of running to God in our weakness, we try to prop it up with things we make ourselves. If I feel holy enough this morning, and I woke up on time, and I have just the right worship song, I can enter into God's presence. When he's like, no, run to me, naked and ashamed, come. I want you to come to me. I didn't die on the cross for you to be ashamed. I died on the cross for you to come to me. And this morning, I believe that's one of the biggest things that we do wrong as Christians. We apply the blood not to go to hell, but we do not apply the blood to wake up every morning and feel thankful. The most natural word that pops into a, Christian's, into a Christian's mind when you wake up every morning. The most Christian word. Thank you. Donkey. 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 Donkey, he says. Donkey. 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 You know what, proud so- what pride sounds like? Are we okay, God? Because your righteousness isn't dependent on you, it's dependent on him. And he died on the cross, bled. Romans 8, 1, so now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So if you wake up and go like, am I okay with God? What you're questioning is if God did a good enough job. If you awake this morning, his mercy is on you. If you woke up this morning, it means there's peace between you and God. And you just go like, donkey, donkey. Now for me, honestly, sometimes I wake up and I feel that feeling, that weird anxiety feeling. Do you know what I do? I lay in my bed and I preach the gospel to myself. Hey self, there was a man who was God, came in the flesh, got beaten, died, rose from the dead, conquered sin, death in the grave. And he made a way by his body, body. So you do not need to feel any shame or condemnation. And you feel it lift off you. Because why? The moment you take that thing, you stepped into your unrighteousness. Mag het sinds ek sê, hulle? Okay, ek, kom, kom ek geen nog een voorbeeld. Ek gaan raak bykie langer hier blijk. Voel ek iets wat die heren wil doen rondom hierdie punt. Ephesians 6. The armor of God. It's an interesting, right? I don't know if you know this, but Ephesians 6, the armor of God, all of them are Old Testament prophecies pointing to Jesus, the helmet, everything. Okay? But they give everything, and, and Paul gave the armor as a way to show the people in the church in Ephesus something because they saw soldiers everywhere. They see it like, ah, oh, salvation, ah, oh, righteousness. Oh, faith. They, they could, it reminds them. 
right? But so we get all the armor and then you get a shield. And, 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 and it says in the beginning, after you've done everything you can do, what do you do? Stand. And then it gives the armor, helmet, breastplate, belt, shoes. And it comes to the shield. The shield of? Let me hear again. The shield of? Faith. For the what? What's it against? The fiery darts of the enemy. Okay, so Gabe is here and I have armor on. In there back there, there's an enemy with fiery arrows and I have no shield. And he shoots an arrow at me. What do I do? What's the first thing you do? You move because you want to get out of the way of the arrow. But the command is to stand. The shield of faith is to hold that thing up. It goes like no matter what comes, the finished work of the cross, I stand in it. I will not move out of my own strength. I will rest in what Christ has done. The strongest weapon of our warfare is the faith that he has finished the work. I cannot finish the good work in me. I cannot produce righteousness. I can only respond rightly to his invitation. So this morning as I'm talking about intimacy, as I'm talking about hearing God's voice, I want to tell you, do you believe the gospel? Do you believe that there is no shame? No condemnation. Guys, you know, like my most effective tool in evangelism on the puck is a clear conscience. Because students don't know it. Do you know what I asked them? Let me tell you a story. Um, each of us usually, if you evangelize a lot, all of us have like a group that's kind of hard to evangelize to. Okay? My hard group is people that were in high school with me. I don't know why. I think it's because I was a really big jerk, right? So whenever I see them, I'm like, oh, nee, I was so an idiot. Now we don't have a here help me. But um, there was so a young lady, I was in Spa a few years ago. And there was a young lady with me in, that was in high school, and I saw her and her mother. Um, and she was kind of a part of my friend group. We were very good pagans. We were evil, evil Gentile did not believe in the Lord, lived a life of sin and compromise. So I saw her and her mother kind of from the side of my eye, and I walked out. And, I, and I, just as I walked out of the, of the spa, I feel the Holy Spirit speak to me probably more clear than I've almost ever heard his voice. You need to go back and share with him. I was like, heck no. Okay, I'm not doing that. Who's ever had that feeling? Right. God speaks to you and go like, you're, you're wrestling with the man. Jacob did it. He had a lump, right? <laughs> he lost, that's why. So I'm walking and I, and, I, and I get this feeling in my heart. If I take one more step, I'm in sin. So I'm like, oh. So I'm like, okay. So I walk back. So I like kind of muster up the, the courage. And I go to her and I was like, hello, yellow Juanet. Good donkey, yes, Gabe, da da da. What more can you also do? Well, I can be done. And all this is. I can say yes, yeah, yeah. Come on, tell. I want to feel a funny story to tell. I actually feel a bit. You know, this is Jack Barrow. And I can say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can say I tell you, Ricky, no. And I sing in the Ricky, so the words, the fingers of my soul and scrap deep in my understand. And I say, this was my life for years. The fingers of my soul and scrap deep in my understand. And I could not sleep, and I always was sick on God, earphones and sleep, hard music. So I drink or a joint drink until I was I could not sleep for my gewete. I could not eat gewet from the wahrheid, so I could not afklik. Nie. So I must have a drink. Was. And I said to him, man, I had this so much a few years back. And I said to him, you know what is the best thing that I've ever had? The first time, when I was in the dark in my bed, and I was in the dark. And there is not one thing accusing me before the Father. And I said, my favorite thing at night now, I told them, is when my wife is asleep and I'm laying in the dark and it's silent because I have peace with God. 
And I looked over and she and her mother both weeping. I said, do you want this peace? Jesus sent me to give you peace. Do you want it? They both got saved right there. Boom. That is our testimony as Christians. I don't care what you've done. I do not care what you have done. The blood speaks a better word. In Hebrews 12, I love this, speaks about the difference between Zion, which is our current state before the Lord in His presence and where the people were in the desert with the law. And it says, it, it gives all these examples. Now we come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, da 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 da, da. And it goes on. And now we come to this place with the sprinkling of blood, the blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. What did the blood of Abel scream out? Justice. Justice. His blood cried out for justice. God revenge me, my brother killed me. Justice. But the blood that was sprinkled for our life screams something different. The blood of Jesus, every drop of blood that fell cried out mercy, mercy, mercy. That blood that was poured out for each one of us cries out on our behalf, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they've done. This morning I feel there's something of the blood there's something of this free gift of grace that is connected to hearing God's voice and intimacy that he wants to impart to you guys. There's a reminder that shame is broken. I don't care how long you are saved. Do you know what is the smartest tricks the enemy has? You get born again, you get radical, you make a mistake. And you go like, oh, you can't say sorry now. You knew better. Get behind me, Satan. It's a lie. That's why 1 John tells us do not sin, but if you sin. Let me just read this to us, sorry. I'm on a little bit of a tangent, but I'm going to stay there. One John. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, listen to this. If we confess our sins. What does if mean? If. It's an invitation. You can't do it or you don't have to. But it's also a, a, a preconceived notion that God knows that we are sometimes going to fall short. It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 2 verse 1, My dear children, I write this to you so you will not sin. But if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Can I maybe get a, a thing for my nose? Sorry, I need to blow my nose. Otherwise, I'm going to... Sorry, guys. And it says here, it says, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Sorry, I appreciate it so much. Hallelujah. Luckily, I'm a son, and that does not freak me out. Um, <laughs> he says, my dear children, I write to you this so you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And somebody needs to jump up and go, hallelujah. Right? Because I don't know about you, but I need a righteous advocate. I need somebody that stands in the way and say, Father, I know Gabe, he messed up, but my blood speaks a better word. So when I get up in the morning and I'm about to go to quiet time and I feel like I don't know how to approach him, he says, no, 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 Hebrew says, boldly approach the throne of grace. Do you know when it says that? In your time of perfection? In your time of strength? When you had a good day, it says, in your time of need. And you might obtain mercy and grace. This in the Afrikaans bij wat so moeilik is. Genade is mercy and grace. Maar dis twee verskillende woorde. Mercy is being forgiven and being taken away the guilt that you do not deserve to be taken away. 
Grace is getting what you don't deserve, the gift of God. And it says, in your need, run to Him. In this morning, church, I want to say to you, if you're needy, you're a good Christian. Because He's made a way for the needy. He's made a way for the weak. He's made a way for those who don't always feel all fired up and self-righteous. He has made a way. And I believe this morning, that's a part of what the Lord wants to do. He wants to break open a path to break off shame, to break off condemnation, to break off a feeling of I cannot approach God, I cannot approach man, because I believe the invitation is deeper intimacy. But we get that when we get the cross and the blood. So I want to ask this this morning. I have a few minutes left. We're going to do a bit of ministry. I want to ask, I'm going to pray for us, but here's something specific I want to pray for. And I feel it strongly in my heart, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to pray, and I believe God wants to break people free from shame. I don't care how long you've been saved. I love this. Um, yesterday, Harry told the story of a, of a duomini that was, saved 50, uh, that was pastoring a church or leading a church, duomining a church. I don't know what you call that. Uh, um, for 15 years stuck in pornography, stuck in sexual immorality, and then he got saved. Hallelujah. That's not achanir, that's hallelujah. Right? That's like, I want to flip tables, happy. Right? Because that's why Jesus came. Do you know that that man was drawn by God? That's why he took the position. He didn't know what he didn't know. But it's the goodness of God that saved him where he was. And now he leads an amazing movement. That's the good news. I've seen worship leaders come to the Lord after they've led worship. So I've never been saved. Because I've always been God. I've mastered the Christian culture, but I've not been mastered by the God of that culture. This morning, I believe God is waging war against shame. I don't know who you are. I don't care what you've done. God wants to set you free today. His blood speaks a better word. His blood speaks a better word. So I want to pray, and when I say amen, I want to ask this. You're a church, you're a family. If you're struggling with shame, I'm going to ask you to stand up. Nobody's going to close their eyes. I'm going to kill that thing. It's evil. You're not evil. The thing speaking to you is. You are not a mistake. You made a mistake. Shame says you are wrong. You are it. Conviction says you made a mistake. And I want to tell you here, God wants to break some of you free today. I don't care who's around you. I don't care if your son or your daughter is with you. I don't care if your wife is with you. I don't care if your husband is with you. I believe there's deep shame that God wants to break people free from this morning. So I want to pray. And when I say amen, I'm going to give you five seconds to stand up. And I want you to keep standing. We're going to pray for you. So Lord, I thank you this morning for your blood that your blood speaks a better word. Lord, I thank you, your blood speaks a better word. Jesus, that you paid the price, that you were beaten, you hung on a cross, you descended into hell, overcame death in the grave, so that we can stand free from shame before you. God, and I thank you that today, people are gonna be broken free from their shame and condemnation. I ask God for any fear of man, and we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And every person that struggles with shame right now, you would awaken their hearts to respond to your invitation in Jesus' name. So if you know you're struggling, you want to get free, can I ask you to stand up, please? Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Amen. Amen. Keep standing. I want you to keep standing, please. Keep standing because we're going to pray together now. This is a big deal. Your standing up is your first response. Your standing up is saying, God, I need you. God, I need you. So here's what I want us to do, right? There's people all around you. You're at OKS Church. You know how to pray. Okay? Here's what I want you to ask. I want you to go to those people. Go stand around them. I want you to go lay hands on them. We're going to pray. 
Right? Go, you can stand up, everybody. Look where's somebody around you. Nobody's not going to have somebody praying for them. Right? In the Bible, it's clear. It says that if we pray for each other, we will be healed. And I believe this morning, people are going to get healed. People are going to get healed from that brokenness within their hearts. That thing that's come, coming against them. There's some people here in front still that need somebody. A, a man that can maybe pray there. Great. Hallelujah. Okay. And I want to pray for you, but when I say amen, I want everybody around you. Let's just, I'm going to take three minutes. I'm going to put the mic down. Right? And we're going to pray. We're going to pray, pray. I'm going to pray, pray, pray. Right? And I, and I believe that the Lord is going to break some people free today. And I want to ask you, as I'm praying, just give that shame to the Lord. Okay, so I'm going to pray under your mouth. You can say, God, I just give you this. If it's pornography, if it's alcohol, if it's adultery, whatever that thing is, just give it to the Lord. If it's just, I struggle to spend time with you, just give it to the Lord. Just say, God, take it from me. I don't want to carry it. You are the Savior, not me. And when I say amen, we're going to take a few minutes. I'm literally going to put down the mic and we're going to pray together. Minister, this is the church. We minister to each other. So, Lord, I thank you this morning. I think I can pray for every person standing this morning. I declare in Jesus' name, freedom. The break free of shame and condemnation. God, that no matter what they've done, you've released them from that in Jesus' name. That your blood speaks a better word. God, I thank you that they will encounter your love this morning. That they would see that you are not angry. You are proud of them and you love them. That you died on the cross exactly for this moment. That they can come to you in their time of need that they can obtain mercy from you. And God, I declare over every person standing, I declare mercy in Jesus' name. I declare mercy in Jesus' name that he speaks a better word over you. Lord, I ask, Holy Spirit, we cannot do this without you. Awaken hearts that are hardened because of shame to feel your love again, to experience your love again. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want you guys all standing. Just take, let's take three minutes. I'll time it on my watch. Just pray. Let's just really pray, not just talk. Let's spend time praying for them, and then we'll move to the next section.
Just keep praying. Let's just keep praying. We're almost done. Just one more minute. Amen. Amen. Guys, I, I just want to say this. This is what church is about. Right? Just coming together. Do you know what's the fun thing about Christianity? Nobody can judge you. Right? Because we're equally broken. If you're saved in the room, you have lost the privilege to judge somebody. Now, you can ask them questions. And if they keep in and send the Bible actually tells you to judge them, but what I mean is you can't judge somebody. You cannot have a judgmental heart to go like, I'm better than you. You're better than nothing. The only thing we all deserve is hell. So these moments where the Holy Spirit highlights, hey, if you struggle with forgiving yourself, let's stand up. This should be like our bread and butter. Oh, I can't wait to show the love of Jesus. Where am I going to show today? Who am I going to pray for? Who am I going to hug? Like, who do I just want to lavish the love of Jesus on because he loves me and I know I don't deserve it. They don't think they deserve it, but I equally don't deserve it. So let me just go love you. This is what makes Christianity so powerful, guys. No other religion gives you this. There's always status, different statuses. With us, there's no status except Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord and the rest of us are sons and servants. That's it. So this morning, I just want to encourage you with that. Last thing I quickly want to mention before I end us off is this. So I believe that a life lived in the light of the finished work of the cross is an invitation to intimacy. I started having quiet times when I got saved from overdosing on cocaine. Not because I, somebody told me to do it, but because I just was so happy I was not dead. It was a response, right? I'm happy I'm not dead. I want to hang out with the person that saved my life. I think it's pretty normal, right? And so some of us don't understand that the sin that we got saved from could have killed us. And so we don't have the same response. So every now and then when my quiet times get hard, I remind myself of how much my life sucked without God. Do you know how it's like a quick trigger back to quiet time, easy. Just, oh, thank you, he says. So I want to encourage you and I want to invite you, this God, El Elohim Yahweh, the one who is most high and he speaks because he's relational, doesn't just do that with the perfect. He is the master of redeeming the imperfect. And this morning, his invitation to you in this church is come and sit, have a seat at the table. Your seat is open. Come feast. Feast from his voice. Feast from his voice. Because faith comes by here. So I just want you, where you're sitting, I just want to pray for you for grace this morning. Um, I actually feel that I should not share prophetic words. I thought I should, but I actually feel I shouldn't. I feel like there's something else. I feel God doesn't want to speak through me to you in this way. I feel he's saying, I have words for you. Come be with me. Come hear from me. Don't hear from Gabriel now. Come hear from me. I have a word for you. I feel so many times we come to whoever we deem prophetic to get a word when God is like, I'm waiting in your room. Hang out with me. I love you. 
So just put your hand on your heart. Jesus, we love you. Lord, I'm so thankful. Thank you for the cross. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. That elk in van ons hier so met ons eigen gebrokenheid by plekke waar ons te kort kom kan sê my Abba sta met arms oop as gevolg van Jesus. En Heer, ek bid van ochend waar ons hier by mekaar is in hierdie gemeente, Heer, dat, dat jy iets wakker sal maak vir honger om jy te ken. Vir honger om meer in intimiteit met jy te wees. Vir honger om dieper in jy hart in te klim. Help ons, Heer. Maak wakker binnen ons een leefstijl van intimiteit. Waar ons weet dat ons kom nie na jy toe want ons goed genoeg is. Ons kom na jy toe want jy is goed genoeg. Dank je, Jesus. Dank je, Dank je, Dank je. Duisend fout. Dank je. In Jesus naam. Amen. Amen. Dank je Helle. Ik zie nog over mij dit afgezet, maar ik zit hem aan. Paar dank je Gabriel. Ik denk volgend gemeente wil ik graag dat je zegt. Ik denk die hier wil op een nieuwe manier. He wants to bring back his presence. En ik um, heb het zo so, zo so zelfs voor die tijd bij een gebeuren weer een gevoel dat hier zijn tegenwoordigheid soms niet wil terugbrengen. Lees wat David en al zijn mannen zei. Met allerlei manskappen van hom. En sê hy, ouwens, ons is nou bij elkaar en ons is allemaal vechters, maar is een ding wat ons gaan doen, ons gaan die ark van hier al. Ons gaan Godse teenwoordigheid terugbreng. En terwijl, Gabriel, terwijl jy bedien, sê dat as of hier of my sê, Gary, dit is nie soos wat jy gedink het gaan wees, sê. Want ek wil my teenwoordigheid terugbring, maar dit is nie soos een vlam wat ek wil terugbring nie. Ek wil my teenwoordigheid terugbring nie net in hierdie gebouw nie, maar ek wil my teenwoordigheid terugbring in mense sy binnenkamers. Ek wil my teenwoordigheid terugbring, ek dra my ark terug na jou kamer toe, na jou kamer toe, na jou kamer toe, na jou kamer toe. Na ek het gedink, het gaan ook net hier wees is nie net hier nie. God draas het en woordig het terug na jou kamer toe. En ek wens ek in my vingers so vir elkeen van jou, van die huis volgen. God draas het en woordig het terug na jou toe. Dat is iets wat my opgeval het en ek wil die preek nie, maar ek wil nie dit vir jou sê, dat is iets wat my opgeval het van Mooses by die brandende bos. God sê en woordig het is by die brandende bos terwijl die bos brand. Gods teenwoordigheid is daar, is in sy volheid daar, is heilig, is wonderlik, is, en, en jy weet, ek het al baie keer goeders hier vanaf gedeel, sommer ek van, oomlik wat ek voel, van shame, en wat ook al, maar, toe die heren met my kom praat, oor hy gedeelte, is daar iets wat my oog opval, is dis heilig, maar God verklaar net dit heilige grond, die oomlik toe Mooses sê, ek moet nader gaan, en gaan kyk. Eerst toe hy nader stap, en die took the invitation, to sê God vir hom, trak het jou skoene, hy is heilige grond, en die invitation is volgend vir jou, jou binnenkomer, is heilige grond, is heilige grond, omdat jy respond, omdat jy respond, omdat jy reageer op die uitnodiging. Omdat jy reageer op die uitnodiging. Jemel Vader, dankie dat ons vanmorgen as gemeente sommer net in hierdie oomlikke kan kom staan. Dankie dat ek sommer net weer eens kan kom verklaar soos wat die skrif sê en soos wat Gabriel volgend gesê het. Die bloed praat harder. Die bloed praat harder. Die bloed praat harder, Heere. 
wat ook al dit is wat ons voor onszelf sê, wat ook al die leen is wat ons glo, wat ook al die goed is, ja, u bloed praat harder. Ek loof die vader vir oogend vir een man wat net gehoorsom is. En ek bid vir Gabriel, Michelle, Anastasia. Ek bid vader, die ook nie die honoring van hulle gehoorsomheid. That you will just increase their capacity, enlarge their territory. Not just their ministry, but their personal territory, Lord. And I bid it for hell work, so yeah. In Jesus, Father, our heart is om your heart to fit. Mag ons, mag hierdie net die begin wees, Heere, van om die hart te vind, in hierdie kwartaal, en voorbij hierdie kwartaal, en jy, Heere, ons weet, die woord sê, jy beweeg van heerlijkheid tot heerlijkheid, en van kracht tot kracht, ek dank jy vir dit wat jy vandag doen, but I am so hungry for what you're about to do, in our church, in our city, among our kids, in our schools, here at tussen die onderwijsers, wat jy in ons land gaan doen, Heere. Ek is in afwachting, in die honger, vir dit wat jy gaan doen. Dank jy dat ons so een deel kan wees hiervan. Ek eer jy, in Jesus naam. En ons allemaal sê, Amen, Amen. My invitation vir jou is ook so, dinsdag gaan die hele ding van How to Forgive. Gabriel, eindelijk vir oogend sommer net so die foundation kom le. Som rechtig die skrif te kan ontdek, sy hart te kan ontdek. Ek wil uitnooi dinsdag gaan. Jy so te wees, sê sê, sê sommer net die high journey ek wil staf, net doel oor wat die skrif vir my en jou sê. Love jylle amal. Valentineel sê, have I told you lately that I love you? <laughs> jylle like amal so beautiful. Jy moet lekker koffie drink. Sê graag wil jy ons met saam jy bed. Doen het. Um, jy is baie welkom om jy voor te kom staan. En uh, ek sien uit vir wat die heren in hierdie kwartaal gaan doen. Amen.